Okay, everybody, it is me, Gregory Manorino, post-market wrap-up on this absolutely crazy volatile day in the stock market. I have so much to talk to you about. So yes, Friday, February 4th, 2022. People, we had an incredibly volatile day in this market. Again, why? Look, this issue which popped up this morning, this yellow flag with regard to the 10-year yield and the debt market as a whole, it's, it's, it has not gone away. All right, let me just clarify something here, okay? I'll talk more about that in a moment, but let's just go back to this stock market. It was all over the place. Look, this morning, we got an absolutely abysmal, jobs report. I mean, it really couldn't be worse. You want to put this together real quick? Let's have a little fun here. So we got this apparently blowout non-farms payroll number, an addition of 467,000 jobs, really? Okay, but meanwhile, we lost, according to their own numbers, with regard to private payroll, the 301,000, and every single week, we lose at least 200,000 to first-time unemployment claims. It's a net loss. Okay, and that's why earlier today, the stock market was down across the board. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, in case you weren't watching, which finished pretty flat, a fractional loss, the Dow was down over 300 points earlier today after this so-called great economic news. You know, as well as I do, that this market does not rebound, bounce higher, go higher on the back of a shred of good economic news. I can promise you, the moment, the nanosecond, I like to say that word, that we get a real piece of good economic news, the market will crater. The only reason, only reason, despite what happened to the 10-year yield today, we'll talk more about that in a moment, why this stock market ripped off of the lows, did you watch the NASDAQ? was because this, the economic news couldn't have been worse. And the market saying, okay, that means the Fed was going to be, you know, what they've been doing lately, walking back all of their talk on aggressive rate hikes, or maybe five, maybe four, maybe three, maybe dog shit, whatever it might be. The fact of the matter is, in my view, and I'm going to keep saying it until I'm proven wrong, in March, the Fed, they have to raise rates. They must do something here, and the market is pricing it in. People, what did we see recently? Let's step back, and if you want to, go review my videos while this market was going down as the 10-year yield was rising because the market was pricing in a Fed rate hike, which didn't happen at the last FOMC meeting. And what was the effect of that? The market fell, just as I said it would. Yes, I was wrong on my call that the Fed would raise rates. The market was pricing it in. I had a, an issue trying to figure out what was going on with the Fed, why they didn't raise rates, but I know why. Now, again, I have clarified that with all of you. The Fed is keeping that rate hike in their back pocket or up their wazoo so they can pull it out in March so the market's going to go higher. Believe me, that's what's going to happen, all right? You can have your own opinion, but I guess we'll see when we get there. So, again here... The reason why, and the only reason why, this market, you know, came off of those lows earlier today, and we were down across the board hard, hard, um, was because the market saying, okay, oh yeah, oh, the Fed, they're going to keep the easy money going, duh, duh, duh. That's exactly what they're going to keep doing, people. It's not going to stop. You have to understand, really, again, the easy money is the Fed's pathway to owning the world. The Fed and other central banks, by keeping the easy money flowing, their debt creation machine in full swing. And how does that work? They issue debt through one door and they buy it back through another door. This mechanism, people, how, ma how many times have you seen me do this exact thing here? Explaining that this, you know, issuing debt, buying it back. Issuing debt, buying it back is massively inflationary, and I mean freaking duh, 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 look around you. You think this is going to stop? You have no idea what's coming down the pike. Are you watching energy here? Crude oil, WTI, ripping higher? Let's see where this goes here. 
with crude. And I'm telling you right now, when we get a pullback in crude, and of course we will at one time, I don't know when that's going to be. I thought it was going to be reasonably soon. That's when you should get afraid. Be afraid when the crude oil drops because all it's going to do, watch, watch me, ready? It's gone parabolic. We're going to see it pull back, establish a floor and go higher. So when you see that pullback, it's going to happen. I don't know when, really, I don't know when, I'm telling you the truth. But when it does, be afraid. Because what is that telling you? I already explained to you that yesterday in my post-market wrap-up, people, I know you can't see it behind you, in front of you, to the right or the left of you, anywhere. But right at this moment, a super tsunami, a freaking super tsunami of debt is coming right at you. It's like a freight train. is unstoppable. It can't be stopped. Okay, the Federal Reserve can't stop it. And nor do they want to. Realize what we're talking about here, people. Okay, the Federal Reserve has gone out of its way to overshoot their 2% target. We are now over 7%. They've gone out of their way to make this happen. They didn't raise rates um, when they had a chance here, and that was maybe uh, a chance they had to slow inflation down. No, they would have to raise rates so dramatically, it would cause the stock market to fall by 80%. I know there's a guy out here calling for an 80% crash in the market. You know what? He's right. He's right. Um, I, I don't follow anyone else's work. That's really the truth. But I've been hearing this 80% number. That sounds about right to me. But the Fed won't do it. They're not ready to do it yet. Why? They're not done. They're not done destroying the global economy, the U.S. economy. They're not done buying assets like there's no tomorrow because it's their tomorrow. They know it's no tomorrow for you and me. That's the setup here. But they're going to make sure they put themselves in the right spot. I keep hearing how the Fed has lost control. Whoever is putting out that narrative, whatever YouTuber, whether I respect them or not, they're wrong. The Fed is in full control. The Federal Reserve is working towards an end. They have been doing this for decades and nothing happens by accident. The surging inflation, what we're seeing around the world, the death of the dollar and fiat currency, the wipeout of the middle class, none of this is by accident. The Fed is in absolute control of not of the world, of the world right now, people. They have we still have the world reserve currency. Duh. I can't stand it when I hear misinformed people. And again, YouTube bloggers who have no idea about how the market works. And I'm even talking about some people that I like. All right. I don't care who they are. If they're spewing out dog shit, trying to mislead people as to what's really going on, I, I, I don't care who they are. I will call them out. My responsibility is to you guys and girls, all of you, right? Not to anyone I happen to think is a nice guy or a nice girl out here on YouTube. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's to you guys and you girls. So I, I, I believe you get the situation here. So anyway, on the back of what really, really, really couldn't have been worse economic news, but it's no secret to you and me. Every month, people were losing jobs. You can't know that. The global economy is contracting at its fastest pace ever in history as a percentage of GDP. It's not going to stop, okay? And it's by design as well. But they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, we're adding jobs. We're adding them because they think you're too stupid to do a little math. But you're not that dumb, are you? No, absolutely not. All right, let's move forward here. Bitcoin ripping above 40,000 yet again. Look, I know how many of you despise cryptocurrencies for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. Maybe you like the debt-based system. How's that working out for you? You see all the inflation around you? are not working out too well. No, it's not gonna. It's not gonna save you. None. None of this is really gonna save you here. Okay. I just look at things from from a financial perspective because I want all of you to be on the right side of the shit house that's coming down around us. It's on fire. Okay. We have a shit house on fire. I guess I have a shit obsession. I don't know. Dog shit, cat shit, bird shit, shit house, it's a shit show. I don't know. Maybe I do. Can I tell you? But uh, anyway, let's move forward here. So, so cryptocurrencies ripping higher. Okay, lovely. 
You got gold and silver catching a bit, and there's no price discovery. Let's sing a song together, all right? There's no price discovery. There's no price discovery. No, it isn't. It's fake. It's fake. Like the news is fake, okay? There is not real physical gold and silver changing hands like, like this. No, it's not happening. It's the paper derivative that is driving the physical asset. It, asset. It's upside down. Imagine a situation where something that doesn't even exist, okay, it's not on the elemental chart, people, is able to pull the price of physical metals around with it. Oh, whoever came up, up with that idea, it must have been the super bank. How about JP Morgan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just love them, don't we? Uh, they're all making us money, though. They're all making us money. I've been, look, People, I've been telling you how to play this market. I've been explaining to you from a few weeks ago, you know, start nibbling at tech. Have you seen what tech has done? All right, if you listen to me, you did well. Buying these banks, this dip right now, I've been buying the banks for a long time. So have my lines, specifically JP Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America. This dip was frankly a gift. Have you seen what happened off the low? And I was buying like a madman. And I put this out in my newsletter. I'm telling you, I'm buying the banks. As a matter of fact, in my newsletter, Free to you and whoever else has the brain power to sign up for it. Link in the description of this video. I sent out my Monday stock picks early. Okay, every Monday I send out free stock suggestions. You do with them what you want to. Are they going to be right all the time? How about no? Are they going to be right most of the time? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. Okay, and look, the, the bottom line is this. You and me really... There's no way we can ever be right 100% of the time. If we can just be right most of the time, well, I think we're doing pretty good. How about you? It's not hard when you understand the twisted, distorted, retarded environment. Once you understand the twisted, distorted, retarded, demented environment, it makes life very simple for everybody. I was writing some stuff down again. Look at this. I'm not going to get to all this, but um, let me just pick out some little tidbits here. Going back to the, what I had said this morning and at the beginning of this video, people. In my view, what happened to the 10-year yield today, that, that bang, that spike up to like 190, I think we're at 1.92, which pushed the MMRI substantially higher today. Red flag, not a red flag, excuse me. I would say a nice big fat yellow flag. When it turns red is what I meant to say. I will let you know. How will we know when the yellow flag turns red? I already covered this and I've been covering this for the longest time years. When it spikes rapidly in an uncontrolled fashion. 1.9, 2, 2.5, 3, boom, 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 boom. That is the key to the, to the meltdown. The key to the real meltdown is going to be action in the debt market, more specifically by watching that 10-year yield. That's it, okay, following the MMRI. That's the truth. The MMRI is a risk indicator, people. It's not a crash indicator, and it's working. So I'm going to leave it the freak alone. You got it? All right. Anyway, so I believe we are going to be able to make or gather some more information moving into next week. This guy right here, all right, I don't care really what the stock market does on a day-to-day, -day, even week-to-week. -week. I don't really care too much, okay? What I want to know is what's happening in the debt market. I watch it like a fiend, really. <laughs> like that, like I'm a madman or something. I watch it all the time because the debt market is going to tell me and you what's going on. All we care about... We care about one thing, one, when it comes to this freaking freak show market. That is, what's the debt market doing? What is the signal coming to us from the freaky debt market? Today, yeah, we got a yellow flag because of the 10-year yield spike. Now, another reason why the market recovered today off, off of the back of that yellow flag and the 10-year yield 
grasp here is because, again, number one, it realizes the Fed's going to keep the easy money going, which I mean really freaking duh. We knew that before the red flag, a yellow flag, which may turn red, okay, um, is because the market realizes this is all fake and the driver is the debt market. Now, the 10-year yield stabilized throughout the day. If the 10-year yield today had gone higher rapidly to two and a quarter or whatever, oh, you would have seen this stock market melt. Melting. I'm melting. Something like that. Uh, look, I told you yesterday, being a little, well, like me, takes you to some strange places. Some strange places from time to time, people. I'm really sweating right now. Uh, anyway, that's 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 really the truth. And, and so that's the deal here. But we are going to know moving into next week here <laughs> whether that yellow flag is going to turn red. And if it turns red, I'm going to be the first guy to tell you that. Okay, I'm going to say, people, you know what? It's time for us to step out of here. Uh, maybe pull some money out of the stock market. Uh, but like, like I said, there's so many dynamics in play. So many. But the key here, and I'm going to say it one more time. What's the key? Ah, spiking of the 10-year yield, which is the benchmark. Let us move forward here, lovely people. Um, 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 um. You know what? I don't want to. I wrote all this stuff down. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. I want to, I want to talk about something else. What? I don't know. Look, um, the bottom line is we are in the middle of a freaking uh, twilight zone. I think you all know that here. And we are taking advantage of everything that comes our way. And we're going to continue to do this until we can't. And there's no guesswork in Greg Manorino's book. We are not guessing. We're not guessing. We know what to look for. If we know what to look for, let me ask you, when was the last time you heard any of the propaganda ministries out here, or even another YouTuber, explain to you that the key to the meltdown, the key to the meltdown is the debt market and more specifically watching that 10-year yield? Could you imagine for a moment if, let's say, I don't know, someone lovely from the propaganda ministry, CNBC, uh, pick one, would come out and tell you that the key is watching the debt market and not the stock market. You see, no, they need to distract you. Look at the stock market. The Dow is higher today and the Nasdaq is lower. They're retards. You understand? They're being paid to lie to you. They're being paid to distract you. Look here. Don't look over here. They want you to believe that everything is just fine. That we couldn't be... You see, it's, it, the, if you look back at, let's say, the last big meltdown, the 2008 freaking meltdown, right up until the last day, literally, you had the propaganda ministry, CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox, with their big, ugly, disgusting, putrid smiles on their face saying, Hey... We're doing fantastic. Our economy is fantastic. Everything is great. Even as we had Ben Bernanke over there, the, the, the guy who should be in handcuffs, you know, would, let, me, let me explain this to you. I covered this recently. What would happen to you or me if we got caught insider trading, you know, like the Fed presidents and the chair himself does. All the vice chair, he just got to step down. Yeah, this really did happen. And get to keep all his ill-gotten gains. But in my view, Ben Bernanke should be in prison, okay, with his head shoved into a toilet, hands held behind his back with a very strange sensation in his wazoo. Can I say that? I think I can. See, because he's a criminal. But if you're a criminal or a member of the Fed, you can do anything you want to. You're never held to account. You can say transitory all, all you want to, and no, no one will say a darn thing. You're still going to be spoken to as if you are a god before congressional committees. Thank you, sir, for your service. Mr. Yellowstein Powell, I thank you for your service. You're doing a great job. And he sits there and he takes his little bows here. you got to be kidding me. I want to say, you piece of shit, spit in his face. Okay, that's what I want to do. 
and say, how does it feel to be public enemy number one? That's how I would start off. You see, but that's just great manner, you know. Man, I am sweating. Pardon me. Okay. A little better? Maybe. Uh, anyway, look, people. So what we're going to do, you and me, is we're going to ponder all this, th all this stuff in this video and every freaking video that I do. <laughs> but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it in. Nobody's looking at it. Even if they are, who really cares? Who really cares? You know, we're a family. We, are, we got a big community going on here, right? So bring it in because we're going to do our fa my favorite thing. We're going to do it together. You ready? Bring it in. Love each other. Care about each other. Be charitable. All right? That's it, people. I will see all of you on Sunday for my Marcus A Look Ahead. And I'm going to cover a lot of stuff with you. Maybe some of the stuff I wrote down I just couldn't get to. All right? Um, but more stuff is going to come down the pike over the rest of the day and through tomorrow. I don't stop with this market. I live it. I breathe it. I eat it. And I've gone as far as to say that I am the market. You have to become the thing that you want to be successful at. Really, honestly, no matter what it is in life. Let me give you a little another lesson here, a little tidbit that I've spoken about many times. I don't care what you do for a living. I really don't. But if you want to excel at it, you must become that thing. You have to become it. And once you become it, well, at that point, you, you will reap the rewards of your success. That's really the truth. And I want to be the best at this. I really do. And I feel a sincere, deep responsibility to get it right. When I get things wrong, when I make a call and it's wrong, it hurts me. It really, really does. Not that I feel ashamed by it. Maybe I do to a certain degree because I, I don't want to give any of you the slightest bit of information that is inaccurate or doesn't work out. And when I say something that doesn't pan out, it bothers me. It really does. because And, and I, I believe me, I understand nobody can get it right 100% of the time, but I'm trying. I wish I could be right 100% of the time, but it's an impossibility. I don't care how much you study anything in life. We are not infallible. And maybe it's we miss a piece of information or, or something, you know what I mean? And it leads to a failure of whatever that might be. But we, we, we're going we're gonna to ride this out like we always do. We're going to capitalize on everything that we possibly can. We're going to have each other's backs. I don't know the, another way to say that. We must have each other's back. Oh, I got something in my eye. Anyway, um, all right, look. Really long video today. I know some of you are not going to like it. I'm sorry about that, but I'm doing my best out here, and I really mean it. I will see all of you Sunday again. Love you, and uh, well, that's it.